title of his speech, or actually I should say he's asking for six to eight minutes, and the title of Vern's speech is God's Book. Please help me welcome Vern. Nature is God's second book. It is just as sacred as the Holy Scriptures. You can learn just as much from nature as you can from the Holy Bible. When you stand at the edge of a cliff and look out at the vast expanse, whether you are a believer or not, it's a religious experience. When you climb up the mountain and you look at the mountaintop and the ruggedness and the steepness and the huge height of that mountain, it puts you in a state of awe and respect. When you stand at the base of an old growth fir tree and look at the circumference and then look up and realize that it's been there probably for a thousand years. You are very humbled. About a year, a little over a year ago, I announced to you that I was going to hike the Pacific Crest Trail. I announced that, and I didn't really think that I was going to do it. I know how to apologize to you. I was trying to convince myself, should I go or not? I expected more of you. I thought that one of you at least would say, don't do it. That's crazy. <laughs> but you didn't. I said, I'm going to be gone six months. I thought you'd say, we can't, we can't do Toastmasters without you, Vern. <laughs> Nobody did. You didn't. And my wife didn't. She said, no. <laughs> so I had to start doing the research and start making the plans. I didn't think it was a great adventure, and I'm overwhelmed this morning with the interest that you've shown in my, what you call, adventure. Delighted that Karen has missed a few meetings, and she's back today from, Wendy is here. How special it is. And the rest of you that are my friends that are going to go on this journey with me. I am losing focus right now. I watched on the forum, and as a people, hikers are getting ready, some of them have already started. They said, we're outgoing type of people, and we're losing focus on our social activities. And we're losing focus on other events. And that's what's happening to me. I'm becoming very narrowly focused. I want to get out on the trail. I have got my gear ready. I bought gear. I discarded gear, bought new gear because it was better, <laughs> threw things away, had things I wanted to take, no, it's too heavy, I gotta get this card, that. I'm ready to go. I'm excited, I'm scared, I'm nervous. When I was young, I said, I can do this. Now I'm a little bit older and I can feel some of the, the problems. <laughs> But as I think about this and think about Joe's talk and Terry, I'm humbled. This is not really such a great adventure. You see, I'm going out there and I'm focused on me. Do I have a, am I going to have a place to sleep that night? Am I going to be cold? Do I have any food? Am I going to run out of water? because it's another 20 miles to the next water hole. All I'm doing is focus on me, watching to see if my feet are getting tired, am I getting a blister, making sure that my hips aren't getting sore, making sure that I adjust my straps and my shoulders. It's all focused on me. The greatest adventure is what you folks are going through. Many of you have had greater pain than what I'm going to endure on the trail. I've heard your stories, like you were mentioning, Joe. And you are trying to stay 
in your career, you're trying to progress at the same, and you've got to focus on the same time you're raising a family or you have grandchildren that you're trying to nurture, trying to save money for retirement. You've got all these stresses and you're doing all those things and seldom do you focus on you. How often do you think about your feet? <laughs> Are you getting tired? Do you need to stop and rest? I plan to listen to my body, and when I want to stop, I'll just stop. And if it feels so good, I might just set up my tent and say, hey, I'm going to stay here tonight and look at this view, because I can hike on tomorrow. So think about that. I didn't think I was going on a great adventure. I thought life is a great adventure. So I'm overwhelmed this morning, but I'm delighted that you are here. I'm going to miss each one of you. I have got things ready. I've been listening to quotes. I've had a couple quotes I wanted to share with you from John Muir. Talks about, in every walk with nature, one receives far more than he seeks. I hope to do that. At this age, I'm not going out hiking, trying to discover answers at this elderly age I would like to get out there and maybe find some questions and see about life's questions I don't know what I'm seeking I've always just been interested in what's around the next corner if I see a hill I wonder what's over what's over that hill what's on the other side of that hill my wife is one that says, oh, that's another hill. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know. It just keeps pulling me along. The other John Muir quote that I wanted to share with you, few places in this world are more dangerous than home. Fear not, therefore, to try the mountain passes. They will kill care save you from deadly apathy, set you free, and call forth every faculty into vigorous, enthusiastic action. And from what I have read on the forum, the adventure that I am going to go on is a life-changing adventure. I hope to put it on Facebook, and, and I hope that over the next week or so to figure out how to put it on YouTube. You are welcome to look if you want to. I'll just tell you now, I grow a very splotchy beard. It's going to be ugly. <laughs> I'm going to let my hair grow. I'm going to join an elite group they call Hiker Trash. The only difference between us and the homeless is we've got a couple thousand dollars worth of gear on our back. <laughs> That's why when you go into restaurants, they want to see your PCT permit. <laughs> Otherwise, they have a problem with homeless coming in trying to pretend like they're hikers and getting free pies and things. I will meet interesting people. I've seen people already coming from Czechoslovakia and from Austria and Australia and all over Europe. And I've got 700 miles of desert to meet people, to kind of join a trail family. By the time I enter the high mountains, I'll have a trail family to hike with because it's a high snowpack this year. They said the snow isn't going to melt, so there'll be treacherous snow slopes to go over the passes. You want to be with the trail family. I've got my ice axe and my crampons, and I will go as far as I can. Some people are panicking and already canceling their trips. But many of us say we go until we see it's dangerous. We aren't gonna, you don't worry about that until you get there. So out of this trip, there is a lot of life lessons. You can adapt to your own life. Quit worrying about things until you get there and then deal with it. We have the experience. You know what to do, wait till you get there. Most important, my hiking pole, I have my duct tape. So don't worry about me. I can fix anything that comes up. 
I have some interesting gear that you would probably be interested in. So maybe watch the videos. Because as I hike along, I will share some of these pieces of equipment if you're interested in special equipment <coughs> to hike. But I would like you to do me a favor, if you can, before you leave. This tie back is what I put down underneath my tent. And it kind of protects the tent a little bit and keeps the moisture from coming up. If you, I've got some over here, some colored markers and a, and a Sharpie. If you could just sign your name to it, I would appreciate it. I'm not going to treat it with respect. I'm going to trash it. <laughs> but as I go to bed at night or as I lay out on a slope when I'm tired and knowing that you are underneath me supporting me, I would appreciate it very much. Thank you.